Hi, my name is Finn. I'm Xavier. And we're here with TAB TV. We're standing outside the Cambridge Union Society, which just this term hosted the Palestinian ambassador for a talk. Uh, today they hosted an Israeli spokesperson from the embassy in London. Today outside we saw at the back of the union there was a protest organised by PALSOC and also the Cambridge Palestinian Solidarity Campaign. Uh, we spoke to some people at the protest and also after the talk we spoke to some of the people who'd been inside. They've made it about actually giving a stage to the um, representative of the Israeli government and they believe that Cambridge um, shouldn't be giving this, this stage. This invite shows I mean, it's, it's an endorsement of views and, and, and ultimately we, we, that's what we're here tonight, we're against, we're against that. By ho having them at the union, it doesn't mean you're endorsing them, it just means that you are allowing them to be questioned and held to account. And I think that's what's important. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israel apartheid has to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. So if you hear the Palestinian views, you probably got 95% of the truth. Okay. While if you heard the Israeli side, you probably got none of it. Okay. The reason why we're protesting, obviously, is the principle of inviting him, being able to morally justify an invite, such an invite. Um, we don't agree with it, and that's why we're here. I think the whole purpose of the union is to give people a stage so that they can be questioned, so, so that we can hold them to account. So why are we protesting? Why would you protest against holding someone to account? That's, that's the way that I see it, and that's why I'm not joining the protest. <laughs> okay, freedom of speech, fair enough, but freedom of speech within moral limits. He represents an apartheid government, and that's something that, in principle, morally, we cannot stand by. One, two, three, four, occupation, no more! Five, two, three, four, occupation, no more! Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is in the apartheid state! Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is in the apartheid state! Would you describe Israel as a rogue state? Definitely. I think that the university, Cambridge University, has to take a moral stance on issues. I mean, we can't sit here and, and you know... One, two, three, four! Occupation, no more! Five, six, seven, eight! So I've been in Cambridge for... This is the start of my fifth year, and I've spent eight, 17 years before that in Palestine. Um, and I go, I do go recently every vacation. So, I've do you think Cambridge students understand what's going on in Palestine? I think Cambridge students are like the most aware from like okay. that I've met from outside Palestine. <laughs> So I understand you're in the talk just now. Yeah. Can you tell us what you thought of it? Um, I thought um, he spoke very well. I thought um, there were a good range of questions and... Um, uh, well, I mean, it was entirely predictable. We heard a reiteration of all the sort of Israeli defences about their policy in the Middle East. Fine, there was opportunity for students to ask questions, but there was no one qualified enough to actually challenge the ambassador. The previous speaker, even though he is on the board of PALSOC, decided to came into the, come into the debate and engage, uh, as opposed to creating a loud noise outside and boycott. Actually, they didn't make any noise. I mean, they're probably one of the worst PALSOCs in Britain. They didn't really make any noise. I felt like a Palestinian representative needed to be present in order for it to be a much more equal event. Like, it's very important that they express their views but they seem to want to have it both ways because on the one hand they're standing outside trying to make enough noise that he'll be put off from speaking but on, on the other hand they put one of their representatives inside the chamber to kind of ask very loaded very shoddy questions so I mean they can't have it both ways whilst we fundamentally opposed this event we needed to have people in there to challenge it because the damage done by not being in there and completely boycotting it would have been almost would have been much greater um, and also their guy on the inside um, his questions, I mean, I don't think they had... What, what did he ask? I mean, he asked most of his questions were just kind of patently false. Um, he talked about, you know, kind of as if Israel is some kind of bogeyman conspiracy state where they sterilize people in their spare time. Well, the US was prepared to go and bomb ISIS after, four, what, four Americans were killed? Uh, Israel has 3,000 rockets shot at it and everyone says, no, stop, go sue for peace. <laughs> No, it shouldn't stand on the side of Palestine, but it should allow these sorts of ideas to be engaged in a proper way. More discussion rather than intimidating action should happen, and I don't know that that many people will disagree with that. I mean, that's the trick here, is to, you know, kind of hit a dialogue, and that's the kind of the main message the um, spokesperson, um, Yiftar Kuriel, was trying to get across. So, I mean, I just yeah. think, I think largely they've pretty, pretty much failed in their objectives. And, I mean, the best quote to use is Desmond Tutu's, in which he said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you stand on the side of the oppressor. Mm -hmm. 
anything else that's all yeah yeah that good. was good awesome <laughs>